Hello friends, this video on states of matter part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched part 1. So we'll start with intermolecular force. So they told intermolecular force are force of attraction or repulsion between interacting particles, atoms or molecules. And some of these interactive, attractive and repulsive intermolecular force are called Van der Waal force. So all the uh, force which you have, I'll, I'll show you different kind of force you have, intermolecular force, you add all these things, all those force, you get Van der Waal forces. All these are called Van der Waal forces. Cumulative actually. So there are various types of Van der Waal forces. The first force is called London force, named after the, the scientist who discovered it. And then you have something called dipole-dipole force. And in dipole-dipole force, uh, we have some uh, called hydrogen is a special kind of dipole dipole force. We'll explain that. And then we have called dipole and induced dipole force. So we have actually three types of Van der Waal forces: London forces, dipole dipole, and dipole and induced dipole. So we'll explain these terms, right? Please note here uh, that the attractive force between the ion and a dipole are ion dipole force and they are not Van der Waal force. Please note, ion dipole force is not Van der Waal force. So for Van der Waal force there are only three types, London force, dipole dipole and dipole and induced dipole force. Right? And as I told intermolecular force are responsible for physical properties. So physical properties is boiling point, melting point, viscosity and surface tension can be determined by intermolecular force. Correct. So before we even start with different kind of force, let's understand or let's uh, recap, let's take a recap of the polar and non-polar molecules. We already know that, but let's, let's do that a recap. We have studied this in the past classes. So polar molecules, there is no net charge. I mean, on each of the atom in the molecule, there is no net charge. No charge not even delta charge in any atom in molecule and mostly this is because of the symmetry actually there is no net charge example if you see uh, there is no net charge on carbon or hydrogen here also there is no net charge on, on uh, bone or fluorine here also if you see nitrogen nitrogen the symmetry there is no no charge oxygen also if you see because of symmetry there is no net charge but if you see there's something called polar molecules where individual atoms may have some charge because of the uh, difference in electronegativity and lack of similarity. For example, if you see H2O, oxygen will have slight negative charge and hydrogen will have slight positive charge. Right? Slight charge is denoted by the symbol. Example, HF also if you see, since fluorine is more electronegativity, negative, fluorine will get slight negative charge and H will give slight positive charge because fluorine will attract electron towards itself. Here also if you see O3, uh, this two oxygen molecules has slight negative charge and uh, this has plus charge. And we have discussed this when you have discussed the level structure. If you are not comfortable in this, you can watch my video on the structure of atom, the last video. And S3 also if you see, they are slight polar actually. They have some dipole and they are, they ha they are some polar molecules. Right? So with this in mind, we, uh, if we know what is polar and non-molecular molecule, let's start with the London dispersion force, the London force or the dispersion force. So they are generally temporary in nature. So we'll explain that. So and these are generally by the non-polar molecules. This London, London, for, London force is exhibited by non-polar molecules and they are temporary in nature. Right? And they are because of the movement of electrons in the molecule. Let's change example. For example, I have O2 molecules, two O2 molecules, right? I have an O2 molecule here, one O2 molecule here. So when I'm talking about the intermolecular force, I'm talking about force between these two molecules. And if you see the normal O2 molecules, I'm just drawing the Lewis structure. The electrons are evenly distributed. So my uh, two pairs of electrons are shared. And if you see two electrons, uh, four electrons each are 
evenly distributed across oxygen. Here also, uh, same thing. My uh, two pair, four four electrons are evenly distributed across this oxygen. But if you see, even as I told this uh, in my electrons, this is my atom, right? And then I have various shells. I have this S, right? Like this. this is various shells I have. We have ever various shells actually, and the electron keeps moving, the electron keeps jumping here and there, and there is a, a big probability cloud here, right? Because the electron is not static, it keeps uh, moving, jumping here and there. So it may happen sometimes that these electrons spend more time in this direction. So what happens is these electrons spend more time in this direction. Since this direction has got more electrons, it will get slightly negative charge, and this will get slightly positive charge. Since this has got slightly negative charge, this negative charge will repel the electrons here and will get slight positive charge here. Since it is slight partly, this will be negative. Similarly, if there is a uh, nearby like oxygen here also, since it has got negative charge and it will repel the electrons here, so the electrons will move here, a little bit here, right, this side, and this will also get slight positive charge and slight negative charge. Right, see the electrons jumps around here and there. Sometimes it may happen that temporarily, for in this particular molecule, the electrons are in this direction more. The electron density is more in this direction. It may happen because it jumps around here and there just like that. So, since it may move, it may be in this direction a little bit more, so it will get slightly negative charge and this will get slightly positive charge. This negative charge will induce positive charge here because this will repel the electron here and again you get slightly positive charge here, slightly negative charge here. Since it is slightly negative charge, it will repel the electrons here and the electrons will go this side. So if you see consecutively what we are getting is plus minus, plus minus, plus minus and then there will be force of attraction between them, right? And this force of attraction is nothing but my London, London, London force or dispersion force. And please note this happens in non-polar molecules and they are temporarily. But it keeps happening. It's, it's like that there are billions of uh, uh, molecules in a, in, let's suppose, in a glass of water, and this force uh, comes into play and goes off, comes into play. And go, but it, it, it keeps happening. For example, it may be that there are some 10 lakhs uh, molecules, and out of that, always a good number of molecules are uh, getting impacted due to London force, and that's why it, it has importance. It's not that. Um, it does, it's not important. It is important because there are uh, millions of molecules in a in a in a in a glass of water. You can see, but out of that, a good number of molecules at the, at any given point of time, good number of molecules take part in this kind of cycle, right? Or in this force. So this force do exist, but it is not that it is always between these two molecules. It keeps changing, right? And sometimes. It is in this part, sometimes in this part, sometimes in this part. If I'm talking about a tunnel of water. Let's understand some more thing on the dispersion force. Uh, it was proposed by the German physicist London, and that's how the name came. And this is a temporary force, and this is always force of attraction. Right? They're always attracted. And the interaction energy is inversely proportional to sixth power of distance between two interacting particles. So if you see, the force or energy is directly in, uh, inversely proportional to R6, where R is the distance between two particles. And these force are important only for short distance, because slight positive, slight negative charge are also temporary. So they are, they are uh, there's, they are existing only for a short distance, right? And these all depends on the polarizability of the particle. How easily a atom in a molecule can be polarized. So this force depends on the magnitude of that because if I have water molecule and oxygen is easily polarized, sorry, water I can't take because water is a non-polar thing, I have to take polar one. So if I have oxygen molecule and oxygen is easily polarizable, it will have strong dispersion force. If I take some other molecule, 
some other polar molecule and that is not easily polarizable, then it will have weak dispersion force. So the magnitude depends on the polarizability of the particle. How easily you can polarize that particle. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.